Hi, I'm Adam Summer. You're listening to the Yershami Talk podcast with the support of the Yeshivat Devar Yushalayim in Harnof, Jerusalem. This is Berachot, Chapter 6, Halacha 3. Very short Mishnah, very short Halacha, but very deep. And it's going to be talking about what happens with foods that are cursed. Now, this came up earlier in Chapter 6, Halacha 1, where it's talking about vinegar, locusts, and novellos. And I didn't realize that really the subtext of it is that these are really cursed foods. Why are they cursed? Uh, vinegar, if you have wine, normally they would buy wine once a year and uh, around the harvest time, and you would store it, and you would be able to use that all year for Shabbat. Well, a lot of times, if it wasn't stored correctly, uh, it would turn to vinegar. And this is not really a good thing because you've lost your Shabbos wine. And now you're in a different position because maybe wine is scarce and maybe you don't have a way to do uh, Kiddush or Shabbat. So this is something that's like a curse. Yes, there is going to be a vinegar. Um, it's called uh, Tamid. And what they would do is they would, they, there's a couple of different types. Um, one of the types is where they would make it out of grape seeds. That's what the Tamid is. They make it out of the skins and the grapes. Uh, by the way, uh, there's an Italian uh, drink called grappa, which is also made out of the skins and the seeds, uh, and it's it's basically distilled, um, and basically they let it ferment, and then you know because it has a lot of sugar content in the seeds, stems, and uh, skins, and then what they would do is they would distill it, and in Italian they call it white lightning. It's actually delicious. It's like a it's like a very strong distilled brandy. Anyway, uh, what they would be doing on this vinegar with the tamid is they'd be taking these same skins and seeds and they would be fermenting it and then they would let it go bad, turn it to vinegar. The other type is the type that um, was made out of a barley and that was a uh, that that was a, a barley that was used in uh, that was a, a process that was used in Rome. The Mars says it was used in Rome, and it was used in a later day when when um, grapes and growing grapes became scarcer in Eretz Yisrael, and they turned to a barley vinegar that the Romans were uh, using. But in the earlier days, they were doing tamid. But it could be where you had, you know, if you leave out your wine uh, and you're putting it in a hot place and you're leaving it, you're not storing it correctly. Uh, after a couple of weeks, it'll turn to vinegar, and that's a curse. And locusts are also a curse because they eat up all the crops, and only the Temeni today know how to eat the locusts. So even if a Temeni person were to tell you, a Temeni rabbi who knew and had the Masora would tell you that this is kosher, you, if you're regular Sephardi or you're Ashkenaz, you're still not allowed to eat it. But... Uh, it is kosher. It's allowed in the in the Torah. We uh, Ashkenaz and 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 the regular Sephardi have lost the tradition on it. And so, if you don't have the tradition, you can't come and make it up. In other words, you're not allowed to adopt from the Tamini who still have that tradition. And by the way, in Eretz Yisrael, uh, here in Jerusalem, you can still find uh, some of the locusts uh, that. Uh, they used to also eat in Taman, and um, they, you know, they the Tamini can eat the locusts here in Jerusalem. Not all of them, but some of them. And I heard they taste like pretzels. They fry them up, and they taste like pretzels. But I would rather eat pretzels. Anyway, the idea is that locusts are like a curse, and they destroy things. And then novellos are interesting. Novellos are going to be um, novellos are going to be dates that, first of all, they're immature, they didn't ripen right, and uh, they're, they're very low quality. And in fact, you're not even allowed to bring trumos and miser on them because they're not regular dates. Now, what, what do we have in common with all this, right? So in the case of vinegar, 
right? Normally, if it's wine uh, or even that tamid, it would be uh, Bray Priya Goffin because it's made out of a grape product. And now, when it undergoes this change for the worse, it becomes Shea Kohl. And in the case of the Novellos, these were supposed to be Bray Priya Etz. And why would they be uh, Bray Priya Etz? Because uh, why wouldn't they be Bray Priya Etz? Because they're inferior. They didn't even grow to the quality of being Bray Priya Etz. They, they are now uh, a Shea Kohl. They're a Shea Kohl. And in terms of the locusts, the locusts would be subject to Shea Kohl because they do not grow from the ground. So that's going to be the idea there. But basically, you know, we're talking about, you know, locusts that eat the crops. And we're talking about uh, wine vinegar that went bad. And we're talking about these immature dates. So the Mishnah starts off and it says, on something that does not grow from the ground, one says, Shekol nie bidvaro. So then it continues and it says, on vinegar, on locusts, on novellos, one says, Shekol nie bidvaro. And Rabbi Yudah says, any food that is a type which is the result of a curse, we do not recite a blessing on it at all. So the idea that that Rabbi Yudah is pointing out is that it doesn't mean that we eat it without saying a blessing because you're not allowed to have benefit in this world without reciting a blessing. But really what it means is that if someone who would desire to eat a type of food that results from a curse, he should go and eat another kind of food uh, on it and then after come back and eat this kind of food. That's really what this is uh, trying to say. Uh, you can see more uh, from the Rashi on this uh, in the Bavli parallel in uh, 40b, or 40b. And the, the Mishnah is very, very short. Gemara is very short, I mean, also. And uh, it's going to elaborate on the sage's opinion. And it was taught in a Bryce, says Gemara, if one's wine soured, he says, uh, Baruch Diana met, blessed are you, Hashem, the true judge. Because again, uh, this is a, this is a, even on something that's a bad tiding. In other words, it's very bad sign that you've purchased your wine for the year for Shabbat. And after a few weeks, all of your wine soured and turned to vinegar. First, you have a big loss of money. But second of all, what are you going to do for the rest of the year for Shabbat? How are you going to make Kiddush? So we're, even when things don't look good, and even when things really don't go our way, we always as a Jew have to say, Baruch Diana Met. And that's really the heart and soul of a Jew, that we're always saying when things, we don't get our way, Baruch Diana Met. That's a very powerful idea. It's a very powerful idea to keep you close to Hashem and to realize to love Hashem. And that's, you know, one of the things that we're commanded, even though we can't see sometimes how things are working out and why this is the way it is. We're, we have to love Hashem. We have to say and appreciate the judgments Hashem gives. And we say, Baruch Diana Met. And the Gemara says, when he comes to consume it, he says, She'akol ne'ye bidvaro. Now, this does not contradict each other. He's saying the Baruch Diana met first because he lost something of great value. And now he comes when he comes to eat it, he's going to say the She'akol blessing. So really, in that kind of event, you're going to be saying two blessings. Um, the Gemara is going to continue. It's going to say, if someone saw a swarm of locusts. He says, blessed are you, Hashem. And then it's going to talk about, you know, the true judge, which is going to say, Diana met. And so again, you're seeing these locusts that are coming to eat all of the food, maybe even your crops. And you see this plague of locusts and you're growing barley for the season 
and you see it and you know that your barley is going to be wiped out in half a day and your crop is going to be wiped out, you say, you know, Baruch Diana met. That's the idea. That's what you say. But the Gemara continues, says, when he comes to eat them, he says, Shekol Neye Bedvaro. Again, this is going to be uh, two different uh, cases. One is going to be where you're seeing this, and then let's say you caught some of these to eat, and they're kosher, and you're going to eat them, then you're going to say, Shekol, they don't contradict. The, the idea is that this is telling you the heart and soul of Judaism, that, you know, life throws things your way sometimes that, you know, I mean, Hashem brings things into the world for, uh, for good reason. It's not accidental. And so even when things don't look good, you're still blessing Hashem. And then when you're going to go use that thing, like the locust to eat it, you're going to say a bracha on it again. Even after it ate your crops, you're still going to say a bracha on it. Gemara continues, says, if one saw novellos that fell from the tree permanent, uh, prematurely, he says, blessed are you, Hashem, Diana Met. In other words, uh, Baruch Diana Met is basically what you're saying. So let's say all of these uh, dates that were harvesting, uh, they, they all uh, became uh, immature and they all fell from the tree and you've lost your date crop. Why could that be? Perhaps a very strong uh, wind or perhaps naturally these were just lower quality dates and they just fell off the tree. That can happen too. And you just saw all these clusters coming off and falling off the ground prematurely. So that's a serious loss because that's your date crop for the year. You still say, Baruch Diana Met. It could have happened from a wind, right? We know that if there's a western wind that blows, uh, sorry, an eastern wind that blows, that is very bad for the crops. And also, if you get a northern wind that blows, it can be very bad for the crops and uh, bad tidings uh, from an eastern wind, but uh, it can, it can uh, be very, very strong, says the Gemara, and so it can damage a lot of the crops. Perhaps there was a, a very you know, strong wind that came, and uh, you know, perhaps it was also you know, an eastern wind, which in, in Eretz Yisrael is a very... Uh, the eastern wind is a very serious sign, a very bad, uh, a bad omen about things. And perhaps this thing happened and it destroyed even his crops. So you're still going to say when something that you witnessed that's really bad for you, it's actually you own this and it's still not good for you. You still say, Baruch Diana Met. And then if you're going to go eat them, you're going to say, you know, Shekol Nye Bidvaro because these don't have the status of saying ha'etz, but you're always going to be blessing the true judge, and Hashem runs the world. And we have to, we have to understand that Hashem runs the world and appreciate it, and we always have to stick to Hashem, and we have to love Hashem. And, you know, if things are happening to us like this, that we're losing our date crop, um, you know, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and we have to do Heshbon and Nefesh. But, you know, it's for the good, even though it doesn't seem like it. And also, you know, it's good to bless Hashem, who's continuously creating and continuously running the world. And we may not fathom the whole, you know, outcome of it, but we should look at these things to try to improve ourselves. But nonetheless, if you know, you're going to go eat those novellos later that you have to go say the Shea Kol blessing. And that's the idea of these kinds of food because they're associated with curses. So that even if you're getting something that, you know, is connected to a curse, you're still saying, you know, Bruch Diana Met. And then after, you're going to be saying the Shea Kol blessing on it. Have a great day.